I had originally purchased this tub, it's a planter tub, for covering the primary mirror. But the way the mirror is situated inside the mirror box, it's a lot easier just to take a piece of quarter inch MDF or rigid plastic and make a square and set it on top to protect the mirror. So I thought, well, perhaps we can make a dew shield out of it uh, the way I did with the Explorer Scientific Ultra Lightweight 12. And that worked out pretty good. And the way this works out with this one, um, it will rest on here. We have this upside down, and I've just got this for marking it. So it'll rest like this, and once I slit this to allow the uh, spider veins to drop down in, then this rim will rest on here. I can trim this up. And so what I'm going to do here, this is where the rope handle was originally right here, and what I'll do is I'll cut this on an angle to allow clearance. This is my red dot finder, and over here is my digital angle gauge. So uh, I wanted to show that so that the next step when you see it together, you'll see how to measure that. And in order to do this, it's better to have the focuser removed, but you nice to have the plate so you know where to cut your, your circle inside the dew shield. That's how to set it up. That's the concept. We'll see if it'll work. If it does, it, I think it'll be pretty sweet. There's lots of different ways you can put dew shields. You can buy the one they have. The one they have is sort of like the Explorer Scientific. It blocks ambient light from back here on this side, but this side is open. That side behind you, you can get ambient light coming in on the secondary. I do visual work with night vision, and so the more that you can block out, the better it is. Even if you don't do night vision for the faint fuzzies like I had explained in making improvements on the Explorer Scientific Ultra Lightweight. So let's proceed forward with it and see how it pans out. So once you get it marked, you know, you'll cut a slit. I went down one inch on it here, down to about there, so that the top of the secondary cage, this here, rests on top of here. Then put it back on there and see what adjustments you need to make. Now I've marked that I need to cut a little bit more on this side for it to fall in easily. And what I've done here, this is an example of it. That's about a quarter of an inch wide. On this one, I'll cut it again, but I'll, I'll cut it on this side to make that extra width. First cut a single slot, put it back on there, see what side of that slot you need to have a little more room, and then mark it and then cut it again. So now that we've got it nice and seated, by cutting the notches wide enough to let it go down. The next thing you want to do is scallop out. I'm going to turn this, actually it would be right side up. You want to scallop out this part here to allow the focuser plate that's right here to allow that to come through so you can get it seated where it's going to be. The reason is because the next thing you're going to do is mark the hole where the focuser is. So we're going to mark the hole and then from there create a notch so that this can slide over the focuser. The focuser is, has a little space right here so I believe this ought to come right to about there, 3 eighths of an inch over this. I believe that's how it will operate so this will be on the outside of the dew shield and that way all we need is a circle and we don't have to accommodate a space for this. That's the plan anyway. We'll see. So this took a little bit of time to get just right, walking it in little by little. Basically what I, what you wind up with is an opening that looks like the Taj Mahal. You know, I mean, you've got this arch with a straight side walls in here. And that, initially I took a hole saw and from the inside to get that arc. Uh, but I was cutting it and trimming it up with a saber saw or what some people know as a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. Metal cutting, very fine. And you wind up, if you could get a hole saw, 80 millimeters to three and a quarter inch hole. So it's about a three and a quarter inch hole. Focuser fits right in there. So then the next thing, uh, this obviously is not going to drop over the focuser because of this rim. So the next thing I did 
was I took a magic marker and marked around here, and I'm going to be removing all of this up to there. And the way this will get fastened is where this apex is out here, it gives you some room. See right there, you've got some room. So I'll drill a hole through here and then run, two, run a screw down in here, a bolt screw with a wing nut, and probably clip it in three places, you know, to hold this to the secondary cage. All right. So these artifacts here are left from where the handle was and they're reinforced areas for the handle for this bucket. Uh, what I found the best way to remove them if you want to remove them, I've got just these two left, I've removed the others, is to take a utility knife and you can score it you know, from the back side like that. That's the best way and I use a hammer and a nice chisel and chisel it out. Uh, by scoring it first so that it doesn't tear out your lip. Score it with a utility knife on both sides if you can and work it with a chisel. That's, that's how you can remove that guys. Well here it is completed. It's 12 inches from here to there and it buries the secondary about 8 inches back. Plus, when you're looking through here, you're not going to have any ambient light from distracting you or coming in from the side. When you just use that one shield, which is adequate, don't get me wrong, okay? But I always like optimizing light to my advantage, and this will definitely do that. That puts it way back in there. It's going to give me a little bit better contrast, cut back on the ambient light being accelerated by the night vision. It's one piece. That's it. That's how it is. It's got the cuts. I might run some uh, black Gorilla Tape around here to kind of doll that up a little bit. But to put it in, basically you just tip it back like that, and there it is. So I'm going to come in with three screws and triangulate them. Put one here, possibly one over there, and one there to hold it in place. But uh, that's pretty sweet. And see your hand, it doesn't interfere with the focuser at all. It's great. I love it. I love when a plan comes together. Now there's another way you can make a dew shield, either partial or completely. And here's a pretty cool, um, useful piece of material. And this is called an easy bagger, okay? It's a portable trash can um, bagger. And what this does is you put this inside of a plastic bag and then it opens up and makes, stands the plastic bag up so that you can put your leaves in there without having to you know, keep it open and fluff it up to get the leaves down there. Uh, they got a picture of a gal here putting the, the leaves down there, but that's not what we bought this for. Okay, here it is here. It's this vinyl material, and it's rigid to some degree, but also flexible. And there it is. And in here, it's embossed. So it's actually embossed, so it, uh, it's like a frocked. And so that would go towards the optics. This side is obviously shiny, but if you look there, you could see that that's not shiny right there. Now this material is, is really beautiful. It's perfect for these kinds of applications. So you can build your uh, dew shield and have it come go completely around, cutting it out for the focuser. And it, this is a lot more manageable because you can do this with a pair of aviation shears or really nice heavy duty pair of scissors. Uh, Easy Bagger, I got it at Ace Hardware Store. Uh, I believe Amazon might have these, but Larson Products, Easy Bagger. Or you can buy the Dew Shield that Hubble Optics offers. Either way, but I just want to show you that for you guys that like to do it yourself.